want to um, share our stories and let people know how really common mental health and substance use disorders are. They affect one in five every single year. One in ten children, that's adults, one in ten children. Very common and um, they're illnesses like any other and Stigma Free is hoping to uh, battle the stigma that prevents people from going for help and prevents getting the care that they need when they do seek it. We encourage all families to reach out to NAMI and it's important for everyone to know that we that, that we offer all of our services at no charge whether you are a member or not a member and we are very widespread in our communities and uh, we offer to advo educate, advocate and support all those in need, all those who live with a serious mental illness and their families. And we want everyone to know all of our services are open to the community and free of charge to all in need. They'll never get a bill from NAMI. We provide right. support, education, and advocacy services, and we advocate for re more research in mental illness and substance use. Yes. So, so anyone can come for help who needs it. No. Carol Caruso, Executive Director of NAMI, Pennsylvania, Montgomery County. And I am Neen Davis, President of NAMI, Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. And we are here to celebrate uh, mental health and substance use reform. Uh, we're here for the Democratic National Convention and we want to let our legislators know how important it is uh, to promote mental health care and services and funding and substance use care and services and funding. You know, a great advocate for our issues. So with that, I want to turn the podium over to Congressman Norcross. Thank you very much. Uh, first, I want to apologize. I am going to turn into one of those politicians I didn't like who, as soon as you spoke, you left. But the one item I'm doing today is an important one. I have to leave here to go cast my ballot for the next president of the United States. Yes, it was Hillary Clinton. <laughs> but before we start, uh, I just want to take a moment and to reflect on who's not here today. I won't hate you, don't worry. <laughs> the ones that we've lost because they didn't have the answer, they weren't provided that opportunity. They didn't, that moment of clarity that it takes along with treatment. Uh, you're going to hear from a colleague of mine who has really been incredible when it comes to his courage. And that's what's so important why we're here today in the most public of forums to talk about mental health and in particular addiction. As you all know and have experienced, there's a difference when we talk about the way that we as society treat people. And I'll reflect back on how I first learned it. I had Two grandmothers, loved them both very dearly. One of them was a diabetic. And I recall how we were always being careful that she doesn't eat the cake because it could cause a problem. My other mother was an grandmother was an alcoholic. We loved her dearly, but it was different. Even as a young boy growing up, we knew it was different. She had something special. They weren't on par with each other. We certainly didn't take my grandmother to uh, Alcoholic Anonymous meetings. That wasn't part of it. So part of what I'm here to do today is to talk about the awareness that it is no different. And we need to make that difference go away when it comes to some of the insurance companies and certainly the way we in Washington treat mental illness. Uh, two weeks ago, we passed a piece of legislation that in many ways started out with the best intentions, as most bills do, to address mental health and addiction services in particular. Incrementally, it's better than what we have, but we have a long way to go. But what it doesn't do is fund those programs that we're doing. So it's a two-part process. Obviously, you have to create the program 
to make the focus. But unless those dollars come in, it doesn't happen. I live right across the river, next to Ben Franklin Bridge, in the city that I love called Camden. See, when we start talking about when we're focused on some of the addictions, there used to be that urban issue, right? You know what the code talk was? Those people. For those of you here who have lost a loved one, you know it doesn't understand that if you're in poverty or you're a millionaire, you're white or black, that you're red or blue or green. It knows no boundaries. And this is the part that is special to me that I hope to address what Patrick started when he was serving Congress and what I'm doing is lay, raising the awareness, but the education about it too. Everybody knows the statistics. We passed a bill back when it was a state legislature that allowed for anybody in the state of New Jersey to go up to a pharmacist and get Narcan. You couldn't believe, thank you, the arguments we had against that. Yeah, oh, you're just enabling them. Ah, oh, they're just going to do it again. No, you're keeping them alive. You're praying for that moment of clarity that they'll understand it. For those of you who've been around when somebody comes out of that, they're not real open-minded at that point. And that's what we're trying to do, is to allow that level when they are ready to find treatment. Uh, the stigma attached to mental illness, and in particular addiction, is remarkable. I look over here and I saw a coffin with names on it. Those are all somebody's sons and daughters, moms, grandmoms. There's not a town hall meeting that I don't hold throughout my area that somebody doesn't get up and say, I'm taking care of my grandkids. My daughter's been in and out of rehab. I'm waiting for that phone call. Hopelessness is not what we want to share here today. We want to share about the hope. When we look at what we're able to do as a country in a military sense, where we literally spend tens of thousands of lives and millions of dollars. I sit on the Armed Services Committee and I was recently in Afghanistan for the third time. You might be asking yourself, gee, why are we talking about Afghanistan? The disease of addiction in particular, those who get caught up in the grip of addiction usually starts in somebody's home.